The Secret Commonwealth of the Elves, Fauns, and Fairies, published in 1691 by a man named Robert Kirk, is a super, super bizarre book. It was written by this reverend, a church minister from Aberfoyle, which is a village in Scotland. And this man claimed to have psychic powers, clairvoyance, and have regular encounters with fairies. Uh, this book is praised by folklorists today, but back then, according to what I've read, encounters with fairies, wraiths, elves, doppelgangers, magic, all that was commonplace in 1691. At least enough for people to believe it, write about it, base their lives around it, uh, draw depictions of these fairies, stuff like that. So why am I talking about this? Why am I recording myself talking about fairies? Well, Robert Kirk, the man who wrote this book, is assumed to have been influenced by psychoactive drugs. Uh, but the lore of fairies in general has a, a weird lineage to a psychedelic mushroom more specifically, and I'm going to do a little overview of fungi, folklore, and fairyland, pretty much, and I'm going to try to do it without sounding insane. Um, like my episode on psychedelics plus UFOs, I'm not here to argue the existence of fairies, uh, even though that would be very dope if they were real, and instead, I'm here to pose the question, what possible role did psychedelic mushrooms play in our folklore, in our understanding of folklore uh so before we get into any of that guys what's up i'm ali i'm a journalist who writes about drugs especially psychedelics uh cannabis ketamine and kratom i usually write about psychopharmacology and drug markets drug policy reform drug therapies you know like respectable facets of drug interest but if i don't tell you about this mushroom fairy folklore uh series of parallels then who will so Let's get into it. This is episode two of Psych Plus, where I talk about psychoactive drugs plus something else. This is psychedelics plus folklore. The psychedelic and fairy vision inducing mushroom in question today, folks, is not the psilocybin mushroom, but the red and white fly ajaric mushroom. Fly ajaric, or Amanita muscaria, is a psychoactive fungi that has alkal alkaloids like muscarine, muscimol, uh, and ibotenic acid, I believe. And when you eat the mushroom, you trip. But in general, the Amanita muscaria experience has been dubbed as pretty awful. Side effects include wooziness and disorientation, drooling, sweats, numbness in the lips and extremities, nausea, uh, nausea and muscle twitches, makes you fall asleep, um, and producing vague waking dreams. That last one sounds kind of cool, honestly, but people have died from this, so I'm definitely not suggesting anyone tries Amanita muscaria. That being said, I'm here today talking about this because people did try Amanita muscaria. A Polish traveler named Joseph Kopek was the first to write an account of his own first-hand experience with Fly Jari, which appeared in an 1837 publication of his travel library. While he was tripping, he said he encountered, and I quote, beautiful women in white who fed him fruits, berries, and flowers. I, I can't even say that without laughing. And this is one of the earliest documented uses of Fly Jari by Siberian individuals um, and this is what a lot of folklorists consider one of the first documented encounters with fairies. The encounters before this generally exist in like poems and songs. And I guess that's, uh, that's too wavy or too blurry of a correlation to bring up. This is the first time something was written down. And I'm not sure why these beautiful women dressed in white who fed on fruits and berries and flowers are considered fairies. I don't know the criteria for a fairy. I don't see um, anything in this written account by Joseph Kopek to, to argue that she had wings or anything like that. But I guess that is uh, the first point I'd like to make, that throughout the psychedelic fairyland literature, um, and fairyland is the real word, fairyland is the word that folklorists use to discuss this different realm uh, where fairies live within folklore myth. Um, I guess some of these fairies look like beautiful women dressed in white. Other fairies um, 
look horrific and are dangerous. Other fairies are tiny little woodland creatures, which are the ones we're probably all most familiar with. So yeah, keep that in mind as we're doing an overview of this European psychedelic fairyland literature. So moving away from the Siberian region and just going more into the general European area, uh, fly jarred mushrooms are referenced in folklore, legends, and myths regarding Baba Yaga, who is a folklore supernatural being that lives in the woods, basically. Um, like the scary witch who lives in the woods, you know, a very common trope. Some of you are probably more familiar with the topic of mushrooms and folklore. Know that there's a huge correlation between witches, witchcrafts, and and psychedelic mushrooms. I'm going to do a whole different episode on that. So excluding that from this episode and going back to Baba Yaga, um, there's a man named Ivan Bilibin. That last name is spelled B-I-L-I-B-I-N. And he did the illustrations for an 1899 edition of the Russian fairy tale, Valicia the Beautiful. So if you look up Ivan Billion or Russian fairy tale, Valicia the Beautiful, you will see um, these pictures there. You'll see the red and white mushrooms all over the place in these illustrations next to the Baba Yaga creature. Um, Baba Yaga is can both be this beautiful looking woman in the woods and also this horrific looking woman in the woods. I think that's part of the trope. Um, anyways, but you'll see these mushrooms all over the place in depictions and illustrations of Baba Yaga. And this is, you know, it's it's folklore for sure, and, and it's just fun to talk about now, but people were generally very, very scared that there was this Baba Yaga in the woods who would steal your baby or uh, do something demonic to your village or eat you. Like, really uh, crazy, crazy stuff. So, and, and according to folklorists, this is another dub of, dub, another subgenre, I guess you'd say, of fairy. So, again, fairies are not all these tiny little woodland creatures, but there's just a bunch of mushrooms whenever she appears. I don't think that's uh, too far-fetched to say that something's there. Something's worth noting. Anyways, my next point is that the mushroom folklore slash fairyland connection is more illustrated than written. So I'm willing to bet a bunch of you can recall in your mind some folklore illustration of a beautiful red cap mushroom with white dots, right? Uh, some of you may even recall uh, illustrations of like cute little fairies sitting and dancing upon these red capped mushrooms. And if you go right now and search fairy rings, you'll see like uh, illustrations of fairies dancing in a ring, usually around a mushroom or something like that. So it's a, it's a very common fairy tale esque illustration. Um, I have a couple in front of me right now that I think are really interesting. But since it's audio, I'm just going to have to tell you what they're called so you can look it up yourself. You can Google The Intruder, circa 1860, by John Anister Fitzgerald. Super trippy. There's a fly jar, like center stage, a toad, um, and a bunch of winged fairies surrounding the mushroom. And then another example is this illustration by Richard Doyle from his work entitled In Fairyland, a series of pictures from Elfworld. <laughs> 1870. So yeah, look up a series of pictures from Elfworld, 1870, if you want to see a whole bunch of these fairies uh, and a whole bunch of mushrooms surrounding the fairies. And the last part I want to bring up is way more modern. So this is, you know, that was talking about the 1800s. Um, this is, I'm going to refer to the very famous Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, the written book, not the movie. Uh, here she meets a caterpillar sitting on a mushroom who tells her in a sleepy voice, you know, that the mushroom is the key to navigating through her strange journey. One side will make you grow taller, the other will make you grow shorter. Alice takes a chunk from each side of the mushroom and begins uh, a, like a series of transformations in size. And... You know, blah, 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 throughout the rest of the book, she continues to take the mushroom. I don't know. I guess that's worth mentioning. Um, so this episode is a little bit brief because there's not a whole lot there. I just kind of wanted to map out the a couple of the parallels between psychedelic mushrooms, the Amanita, the scary fly jar mushroom, and uh, fairy folklore. And in future episodes... I will be covering some of these more wonkier, but still very curious cases of psychedelics having an influence on our folklore, such as 
the very famous uh, argument that Fly Jarek may have played a role in establishing the tradition of Christmas. Um, and that Christmas may actually be a winter Siberian shaman mushroom sacrament involving tradition uh, and doing a deep dive into scholars like Carl Ruck, who, who pioneered a lot of that work. Anyways, guys, follow me on Twitter at Ali Reporting. That's at A-L-I Reporting. If you're interested in reading drug news, um, both wonky and rooted in reality, I do it all. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Shout out to my guy, Alex Kafka. He made the visualizer for this video, and we plan on doing more video and audio stuff soon. So, uh, yeah, so thanks for peeping, guys.